What's up, family? This is Smokey Norfolk, and you're watching Gospel Music Buzz. <laughs> Of music buzz, y'all. We're live in NYC. We're here with Mr. Forever Young himself. This man is not aging, man. You know, multi chart topper, singer, songwriter, the one who brought you I Need You. I, I Need You Now. Yeah. I understand. And soon, full length album, I still have you. Yes. It's coming, it's yes. coming, it's coming. Mr. Smokey Narfield, Pastor Smokey Narfield, welcome to the show, man. How Thank are you? Thank you for having me, brother. I appreciate of course, it, of course. But seriously, though, man, I need to know what is your like skincare routine? You know, did you dip in like you know something or you know, like what's 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 going on? Late, 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 late. So to amazing. So let me tell you, mm -hmm. I grew my hair out. Okay. I lost a lot of weight. You know, mm -hmm. just decided one day I was going to start riding a bike. So I'm a cyclist now, and I'm on okay. 25, 30 miles a day. Mm. You know, so uh, it's amazing. I guess how much younger it made me look because everybody's like. What are you aging backwards? Are you the, what, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so basically, then I mean, I already lost my hair, so I don't need, I don't need to cut it. I don't need to cut my hair. So at this point, no, I need to lose some weight. So the the wife is going to be happy with that. <laughs> so now, tell, tell me now. So before, like you know, I know you have a you know long history in education, mm -hmm. you know, historian and all of that. But before, sort of like deciding on that pivotal point, you know going in this road, going the academic route and sort of pivoting and saying, you know, which one came first? Was it going the academic and then you were like, you know, hey, I want to go into ministry, singing, songwriting, like which came before what and what sort of like solidified that direction? Well, music is before everything as far as my passion. Okay. I've always had a passion for it since I was a kid, four or five years old. I'm playing the piano by five years old, picking out melodies and by 10, I'm actually a pianist, you know. And, um, you know, I always had a love and a passion for that. Mm -hmm. But my parents are strong advocates for education. Like, they were, it's, it's no it's no question about it. It's not whether you're going to college. It's not, you're going. It's just where are you going to college. That's it. So, uh, you know, it, it made me a very strong proponent for education. And, and it opened a lot of doors. It gave me a lot of these access, a lot of uh, experiences. I was able to really, really experience a lot through educational pursuit. Um, actually, that's how I ended up in Chicago. Mm. So um, I'm out of school. I'm I'm teaching school. I was a history teacher mm -hmm. for seven years, my three years in Arkansas, and three and a half years in Arkansas. And then from there, I ended up accepting my calling to preach. Moved to Chicago to go to seminary to work on National Divinity. Ended up signing a record deal while there, and then the world became familiar with my music ministry. Yeah. So you know, to that end, it's it's kind of interweave or interwoven along the mm -hmm. entire journey they've always both been there but uh certainly music is the foundational passion ministry became the power no and you know and i kind of with with that same vein you mentioned with education and still wanting to make sure regardless of ministry still you know growing up in that vein do you felt like that has sort of enhanced from a writing perspective or influence just sort of looking at history looking at things with one view now when you're writing and when you're, you know, kind of going down to that creative flow, do you feel that that weighs in on it some Actually, degree or not necessarily? No, no, okay. I don't. Not necessarily. I don't I don't know that the educational foundation or the educational access contributes greatly to the creative side. Okay. Now, it does inform me so that I am actually an intellectual mm -hmm. in the midst of being creative, which yeah. is, I guess, a unique nuance in itself. And, you know, I'm able to articulate or use language mm -hmm. in a way that is strategic and very thoughtful and thought provoking. So for that end, it's made me a better writer. But as far as the actual creative elements, the creative process, I don't know. There is a theory, however, let me back out of that and say this. There's mm -hmm. a theory, and there are many parents who have ascribed this theory, 
that music or musicianship, learning to read notation, learning to actually read music contributes to your analytical capacity. Like yeah. you, you, you become an analyzing thinker mm-hmm. you know, or a better thinker and it fires off portions of your brain that makes you more well-rounded and gives you, you know, intellectual access. So maybe, I don't know, but not, not intentionally so. You know, it was just something that was a part of my process, a part of my journey. And started doing this for the length of time that you've done this, the success, you know, the well, accolade. I've only been, I've been here two years. <laughs> I don't care what he says. I've been here two years. That's it, right? Two, two, and he does look like he's I'm 21. A new artist. I, I'm, I'm looking like the uncle right now, but, but we got we we got to fix that. So, you know, going does it ever get to the point where you're if you have to go perform on a big stage? Is there still nerves involved? Is there still anything? Or you've just sort of like how how do you how are you handling that after such such a long time? Does that even still come up? It does. Um, it depends on the opportunity. You mm-hmm. know, when you challenge so if I continue to do the things that I've done the whole time, you know, I say two years just for me, but of course it's over twenty. If mm-hmm. I'm doing the same types of events, same types of venues, same types of atmospheres, then it becomes routine. Yeah. It becomes monotonous. But the beauty of God and the beauty of my journey is that I keep getting new opportunities, mm-hmm. new stages, you know, Carnegie Hall, nerve yeah. wracking, like, oh my yeah. God, I've not been here before. Now the music itself and, and doing music is like drinking water for me. It's literally yeah. like breathing. So once I'm there and once I am actually in the music, it's second nature. But the opportunity still calls me pause and make me say, oh my gosh, it's a big audience. It's okay. Now I'm doing theater. I just did yeah, yeah. Step Africa in Washington, D.C. Yes, it's yes. a huge dance company and they're doing phenomenal things. And I'm on stage with them. And mm-hmm. I actually have a part in this theatrical presentation, <laughs> this dance presentation. Yeah, I'm like, oh yeah. my God, don't let me, please don't let me mess up. Don't yeah. let me miss my line. Do I remember what my words? So of course I still have those moments and I still go through those things. But once I'm in there, then it's it's literally like riding a bike. And even because I was going to ask you about it, even sort of going into that vein of, you know, trying different things still within the vein of music and ministry. But you mentioned just now, you know, with the opportunity like that, Mm -hmm. you know, does it then sort of give you pause? Like, hey, you know, maybe at some point I probably, you know, want to do some acting. I probably want to do like if those opportunities continue to present themselves you're just gonna just walk right into that or that's just something you're like you know i'm not even 100 percent on i would take i would take definitely a great look and a great (laughs) time to pray and consider but uh, i've been offered in many many years ago i was offered an opportunity to do broadway Um, Mm, my brother said at that time i can see that gwen quinn shout out to my my gwen gq media but she hit me up and said would you want to do this would you want to do broadway and I thought about it really long, really hard, and I was like, nah, mm. not right now. And you know, maybe at some point, but it's very demanding. It's very, very demanding. And wow. I, was, yeah. I was going yeah. into pastoral ministry, which is equally as demanding, if not more so. And so those things at the same time, I don't know that I'd be able to pull them off. But if it was a one-off or some brief opportunities or even you know acting opportunities, yeah, I think I would take those. Okay, y'all, y'all hear that right? You hear that right? So come on, bring bring those opportunities on. Absolutely. <laughs> you mentioned past pastorialship, right? So ministry, family, sort of going into that vein. Then at which point you're thinking, hey, I'm gonna launch a church. I'm gonna launch a ministry. I'm gonna go into that because I'm sure, like you, as you said, that has its own set of demands. It has everything else that sort of comes with that. You know, what sort of catapult that decision? Um, God, yeah. you know, it's no, it's no system, there's no formula to it. It's not, you know, easily understood and definitely not even easily grasped, you know, so pe- for people that run to it and run into it, uh, I'm afraid for them because <laughs> they're mm-hmm. for a awakening, you know, it costs you everything. It's sacrificial on another level. So it has to be God that taps me on the shoulder. I really, no, he didn't tap me on the shoulder. He actually had to arrest me, <laughs> grab me, <laughs> literally grabbed me by the collar and said, you yeah, need to yeah. do this for me. He gave me the desires of my heart. I became the number one artist, according to Billboard, three yeah. years in a row. Mm-hmm. I was number one on the charts. I was doing incredibly well. And God says, okay, that's great. I gave you the desires of your heart mm-hmm. because you've been delightful in me. Wow. You've delighted yourself in me. So I then stop and say, okay, God, yes. It wasn't an easy yes. It was mm-hmm. a running around Jonah moment type yes. 
I just didn't make it to the bottom of the wheel, the bottom of the fish, and the bottom of the ocean. Uh, but um, when I finally said yes, and I turned towards him, mm-hmm. I walked away from music. And even at that time, it was seven years. Yeah, yeah, I was going to ask. Yeah, from nothing without you mm-hmm. to um, justify or smoking off a lot, which is mm-hmm. the project that was on. There were seven years in between. Yeah, because it's it's not full time; it's all the time, and it was mm-hmm. all consuming. And I, but I gave him everything that he asked me for because he had been so good to me. And it, the payoff, the blessing, the reward, mm. undeniable. I come back, I release um, No Greater Love. Uh-huh. It goes number one. It wins a Grammy. Yes. So I'm like, okay, God, you can't go wrong with being faithful to you. And so, yeah. you know, like I, I would just admonish anybody of the same thing. That God is so faithful that if you're faithful to him, he has to honor his word. He says, I'll give you the desire of your heart, yeah. which was there because of him. He in, in, in imputed that within you. You have mm-hmm. the capacity to dream because of him. And so um, that, that's been my experience. And it's been a very rewarding, super rewarding experience. And 10 years later, I'm back again. Come man. on, come on, come on, <laughs> Climbing man. Climbing the charge. We're still I guess, going up. I get <laughs> Yes, yes. And, you know, it's, it's funny you mentioned, because I was going to add from that seven years, because, you know, seven being the number of completion mm. and you sort of mm. like there's that seven year break and then yeah. boom, as you said, yes to this, then everything. So even looking at that, I'm like, you know, God, it's just funny the way how these things uh, happen. Right. It's yeah, just God the way. Is utterly amazing. <laughs> it is utterly way, amazing. The way how you go, how you go back. So, you know, you're you're doing this in your service. And I, I, I caught um part of the, the last service that you, you know, um when you were when you were talking about just honoring those that serve. Mm. And that really mm. struck me because I thought I was like, you know what? A lot of times there's those because I serve in ministry at my local church, mm-hmm. but there's something about just being. Yes, you do it on the God and all of that, but still being honored, still being, you know, given that. Hey, thank you. We see you. We appreciate that. And even to the ones that missed the service, you still. I was <laughs> like, there, there's something here, man. There's something here. So just that that belief that that hey. I'm going to still honor those. Yes, I may be here, but all those that are supporting me, you know, just talk about a little bit about the importance of that. Well, you know, Jesus healed 10 lepers. Only one of them came back to say thank you. And that was the one that received the favor and the blessing of God. You know, um, all of them received the miracle. But this guy, he, he got another portion. Yeah. And I think there's much to learn in that process. That just going back and telling people thank you. And you're right. I don't serve and I don't do what I do in ministry or the accolades, even what I do in music. Yeah. Yeah. You know, whether I win the trophies, win, win the awards, mm-hmm. I desire to. I actually asked God for it when I was a kid mm-hmm. and he favored me to do that. But that's not my why. If that yeah. becomes your why. You're going to be miserable, miserable. Mm-hmm. So it's not a requirement, but it is an encouragement, you know, and I think sometimes people need to be encouraged what we need to encourage, Bible says encourage one another. And so I think it's that's what it's for. And, and encouraging yeah. people that do above and beyond or exceptional work, why not? Because then you're gonna get it's almost like fuel. It's like yeah. a shot in the arm. Yeah. You know, God's gonna give them the grace to do it. Mm-hmm. But I think we give them the fuel to keep doing it. And and you know, and speaking about fuel and encouragement, this this new project. This new project, I've had the honor to be able to listen to it. I know there's a listening session you've been going around, mm-hmm. you know, positive feedback. I had some friends that was in Atlanta. Oh, wow. As he's there, he's like <laughs> texting me. He's like, oh, he did a bunch of new stuff. He did this. He did this. Oh, oh. I'm like, dude, don't ruin this for me. I got my own. <laughs> Spoiler alert. I got, I got my own situation to listen to it tomorrow in New York. But, you know, taking a break, coming into it, you know, just starting with the name. You know, what is, because I'm always curious when someone choose to label or title a project, mm-hmm. you know, where did the name itself sort of, you know, what, what started that name to go with? Well, it, of course, it's the title single, and yes. the, you know, the lead single of the project, mm-hmm. um, I Still Have You. But let me back up to I Need You Now. You have to understand the context of I Need You Now and really appreciate the content of, of I Still Have You. All right. So mm-hmm. I Still, I Need You Now 
was written because of personal crisis, family yeah. crisis. My wife being diagnosed with tumors, my father having open, open heart surgery, my mother being paralyzed. I mean, it was just one thing after another. Yes. And I need you now. It was a desperate cry. It was, God, I need you now. Mm -hmm. We weren't supposed to be able to have, my wife and I weren't supposed to be, supposed to be able to have children naturally. Wow. You know, they diagnosed her with tumors for the second time, said it might be mm. cancer this time. You might as well consider alternative means of childbearing. And uh, God blessed, but God blessed yeah. us with two beautiful baby boys who are now two grown men, mm -hmm. songwriters, mm -hmm. producers, play yeah. more instruments than I play, read <laughs> music better than I read music. They're, they're amazing. Uh, they pushed me. And the world has them to thank for me being back in the music business. Y'all hear that? No, seriously, like for real, for real. But they pushed me um, to sit down and say, Dad, we want to work on it. Yeah, you're not done yet. There's more music in you. The world needs what you have. So I paid attention to them. I sat down and I said, let's write it. My oldest son, is. I've taught them lyrical content is important. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important. That you can't just throw stuff out there. It's got to be meaningful. It has to be transcendent. It has to long, be long, have longevity. Yeah. And that, that's just making sure that it has depth. Mm -hmm. So when I sat down with them, my, the first line that my son wrote was, I'm at my best when I met my worst. Mm. And I'm like, okay, in my weakness, your strength is made perfect. This is good. Let's keep going. Yeah. And we wrote this song together. So it's special for so many reasons because mm. I wrote it with my sons. Yes. It, it, um, it is so crazy, eerily, incredibly, magnificently God. That I wrote, I need you now. He blesses me with these men mm -hmm. who are now sitting down with me, and they wrote, I still have you. Wow. From I need you now to I still have you. Beautiful. And so what better title could we have for this project than, you know, to declare that we have each other, but more importantly, God is still with us and has been with us the whole journey. So yeah. that's wow. where it comes from. Man, wow! I mean, I don't even know where to where to go from there. That's that. You see, and I and that's that's special on so many levels because you were sharing with us while you were at CD Winery a few years back. You were sharing with us that you know when you were playing some and singing some of the newer music, you were like, you know, I'm super excited by this one, y'all, because mm -hmm. my son produces. My yeah. son was a part as you wrote, you know. Yeah. So being able to do that this time around, yeah, and. You know, and doing all of that with them, I'm sure that is super special. Now and then, some of the other, you know, titles on on the project, sort of like going through that, you know, coming wrong with, you know, hey, we're gonna write this. We, like, what was the time frame that uh, you would say the body of work was created over? The whole decade, <laughs> <laughs> the whole ten years. Time. You know, it, it's crazy because I'm not, I'm never in a rush. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard Jay Z say this, and it it was a it was confirming for me because mm -hmm. I was like, you know, then I'm doing the right thing. I will hold a song, man, for 10, 15, 20 years mm -hmm. because I'm never. As a matter of fact, I have a war chest of songs that I've never released. Wow! Not many people have ever heard that I've recorded. That I have a whole love song album already done. Two mm -hmm. old school projects with just old school music that are done a youth choir that I recorded in Chicago. So oh, wow. I'm never in a hurry. I want God's timing to be the time. I want it to be perfect. So some of the songs that were written on here, my sons and I wrote with Black and Elvis, with Felly the Voice, who are huge mm. R&B producers, songwriters. Yeah, yeah. Um, we wrote a song, they were kids. They were like little teenage boys, 13, 14 years old. And they're in the studio and they're working on a track. And they're like, okay, dad, we need you to go in the booth. Oh, no, 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 I'm here to support you. <laughs> Uh, you know, my wife and I sitting on the couch behind them. We're yeah, just like yeah. proud because they're being mentored, yes. they're being tutored by the best, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. guys who produce all of my stuff. And um, that song in 2014, when we recorded that song for the first oh, time, wow. it's called Blessings. Mm -hmm, and it's mm -hmm. now on this project. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. again, it's been an entire, you know, decades that some of these songs have been in the works. And out out of the ones that you that you mentioned, because again, each of them have their own story, mm -hmm. and you started with the title track, which is a powerful story in it of itself. Outside of that, was there one of the songs that you were like, you know, I don't think I want to add this one. A lot of times, I often hear, you know, this one wouldn't have made the album, or this one give me the most. You know, when I was writing this, so much was happening. I couldn't even finish it, but then I'm able to like, like, what would 
that one be for you, even if there's more than one, but I don't know that there is one. I mean, everything uh, that I've written, you know, it just has a time and it has a place. Uh, so even if it's not on this project, I don't feel any less about the song and I never struggle. A lot of, most of the ballads that I've ever written have come from my own pain. Wow. You know, um, I need you now. God is able. I wrote God is able when my second son, when we found out he was, we were, she was pregnant with him. Yeah, yeah. God is able and he won't fail, you know. Uh, so some of those big songs are my biggest songs that came out of personal pain, struggle. And then I sat down on one project on Smoking Off Alive and they wanted a ballad. They said, we got to have a piano song. We got to. I mean, you're smoking off. And I'm like, I don't want to dance. I don't want to do that. I want to dance. Let me get up off the piano, please. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I sat down and said, okay, I don't want to go through no pain, right? Any pain right now. So I wrote Dear God. You know, mm -hmm. feel so good to make it this far. I didn't think I could take it, you know. So um, on this project, I still have you, is that song. Got you. Like, it is that song. Got it. Where I have a connection and a tie and a story to it. And you're right. Every song on the project has a value and has a meaning. Even the songs that I haven't put on this project, mm -hmm. they come on a limited edition a little bit later or mm -hmm. something. Um, Come on, y'all. Let me condition. You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you trying to keep me at work, bro. You, you trying to, he's trying to keep me at work. I got a job, man. I'm a pastor. I got people to serve. <laughs> so, I know we're, we're, we're by the wrap, but I want to just know, like, someone that's going to be downloading this music on the Friday, they're going to be, you know, downloading it, streaming it, listening to it. Like, what word of encouragement do you have to them to say, hey, whatever season you may be in, you know, and you're ready to start, you know, digesting, consuming this project, going through it. When you wrote this and you put it out into it, you know, put out it's going to be released, sort of what you wanted folks to take away from it, but also what message do you have for someone that is now whatever season they may be in, but using this project to sort of get them through that? Well, you know, the, this project is a ride. Like it literally is a journey. And every project that I've ever released has been that way. I mean, I have something on here for absolutely every generation, every demographic. Um, and that's been the consistency of my entire career. So I hope that when they sit down, they sit down and allow themselves to take the journey. That it's not just, you know, a one-off, you know, go to your song, but it really is a journey. You're going to party, you're going to cry, you're going to celebrate, you're going to dance, you're going to escape all the pressures and all the pains and you're going to be reminded that God is still God, you know, and we know that all things work together for the good yeah. of them. And you'll, you'll get that in this project. I went back and pulled up some of my old songs and redid them. Um, I, um, I still say thank you for my very, you have to have been with me 20 years to remember that. <laughs> still say thank you all about you. The very first song I ever recorded in my life. Um, and I did that and strategically put those songs on that in my name because they have been powerful for me. They've yeah. been encouragement for me. They've been everything that I've needed in individual seasons. Yeah. So I know whatever season you find yourself, even if it's a celebration, you know, blessings, you know, you're going to party. Like for real, you're going to really, really, really true. party. This it's, is true. You're going to party. You know, so whatever season you find yourself in, you know, I just admonish you know, grab it, hold on to it, take the journey and allow God to speak to them. To them. My hope and my, this is really the foundational pillars of my mm -hmm. entire life and ministry is that they walk away with hope, healing, and empowerment. Hope, healing, and empowerment, y'all. Listen, the new project comes out this Friday. This Friday. Y'all need to get it. You need to download it. You need yes. to stream it. You need to get it for someone else. Don't just stream it. It's, it's a yeah. whole... And I'm not going to get into that, but just make sure you download <laughs> it first. You stream it. You send it to someone Smokey, I, I appreciate you. It's truly been an honor speaking with you. Thank, Thank you for you, sharing your heart. Thank yeah. you for just being super comedic as always. <laughs> and, you know, and I appreciate the tips. So I'm going to have to start, you know, start cycling. I mean, listen, so, that, so the next time I see you, you know, I mean, you know, calling, you yeah, know yeah. I, got, I ain't going to look like the unk. I'll just say <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank so you so much. much. Thank you. <laughs> Mm-hmm.